going to do the um, Pledge of Allegiance, so we're going to ask you to stand again and remove cover. My apologies. The Pledge of Allegiance is going to be led by Don Fritz, Commander BFW Post 7106, followed by the National Anthem performed by NS High School graduate Faith Perez, who is a fifth chair uh, Texas Allstate, and then the opening prayer led by Henry Sperling, Chaplain, American Legion Post number 361. Stage cut, present, arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order arms. Ready. Freeze it. Colors. which abide in our land, for your guidance in the hour of peril, and your love in times of need. Help us to remember the valor and the devotion of our departed comrades, not only those whose bodies consecrate our soil, but also those who sleep beyond the seas, and others whose resting places will not be known until the last day, when the deep will have given up its dead. Oh God, teach us to honor them by cherishing the ideals 
for which they fought. Keep us steadfast in the call of human rights and liberty of all law and orders and treasure Americanism. Give us the power to see and the will to do right. Grant that we may preserve the ideal for which our comrades died. May your merciful blessings rest upon those they left behind. Keep us forever firm in righteousness, humble of heart, and unselfish in purpose. Amen. Thank you, you may be seated. Well, welcome and thank you veterans, family, friends, citizens, and officials for joining our special Memorial Day ceremony. We're honored to have city officials, county officials, members, and officials of various groups, including American Legion Post Number 361, Marine Corps League, Ellis County Detachment Number 1452, VFW Post 7106, and many more. My name is Nathan Grant and I have the honor of serving as Master of Ceremony for today's events. Like everyone here today, I am a proud supporter of our military and their families. Each day they make sacrifices that civilians like myself will never comprehend. I count it a privilege to play a small part in today's events as we honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice for this great country. If you would please join me in welcoming Honorable Mayor of the City of Ennis, Angie Juniman. Good morning. I have something that I want to say, but so let me say this. Um, a special welcome to all of you from our elected officials and the leaders of our community. If you are an elected official in Ennis or county or one of our leaders, would you please stand up, please? Marty Nelson, stand up. If I could ask you to please give them an applause. Thank you very much. So the second thing, again, I'm not going to go into what I had written down because this was, this morning was a very uh, interesting moment for me. My daughter has been with me for the last two weeks while her husband, who has served in the Navy for 19 years, has taken two weeks off as they prepare to move to the city of Ennis, Texas. Uh, my son-in-law has had has been on nine tours. I wanted to I wanted to tell him that my thoughts were with him today, and he th said thanks, mom. And the tears started. So I know those of you that have been in a war, who have lost friends, who have lost loved ones, who mean so much to you. My heart, my tears are with you today. Memorial Day is about pausing our everyday lives to remember military veterans who have given the ultimate sacrifice. People throughout the country will together gather to remember, to honor, and to pay gratitude to those who have served our country, our heroes. What is a hero? A hero is someone who has given his or her life to something bigger than oneself. Today we give thanks to all those heroes. Let us give thanks for their lives, for without them we would not be a free we would not be free. Freedom is not free. Thank you for attending today. God bless you, God bless all your families, and please remember our heroes who have given the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mayor. I'd like to introduce Ms. Annie Wurzbaum, Chairman of the Veterans Program Committee, to say a few words. to 
thank everyone for coming here today. The Veterans Committee always does such a good job of putting together a program. Also thanks to the others who are involved in any way in making this program possible today. Last year, when they delivered the Vietnam Memorial Sculpture, little did we know that the person depicted in on the statue, Sergeant Major Chorus Sworn, would be our keynote speaker today. Memorial Day is a day of pride and honor for those soldiers who died while serving our nation beginning with the American Revolution, through the global war on terrorism, and every battle and act of war in between. We are here to pay respect for each individual throughout our nation's history who has paid the ultimate price for the freedom we as Americans enjoy today. I think sending off a loved one so they can serve in combat must be a surreal experience. I suspect conflicting emotions of fear and pride are present in the minds of both the service members and their families. Like any send off, you hold them tight. You tell them you love them and then watch them head out until they are no longer in sight. What makes sending a loved one off to war very different from any other goodbye is each family member lives in fear daily that a uniformed military officer and chaplain may show up at the door doorstep to deliver the devastating news that the loved one has been killed while defending the freedom that those of us left behind so often take for granted. Today, we pause to consider how truly special the person is who devotes their life to protecting the freedom of their fellow Americans. Surely their inner being was devoted to their, our country and its citizens. They deserve our gratitude. We don't know them all, but we owe them all. All military personnel gave some, some gave all. The purpose of this ceremony is to honor those soldiers who died while defending our nation. Let us never forget that freedom is not free. Now, I want my granddaughter to read this poem. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunsets glow. To you from failing hands we throw the torch, be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. May God bless you and your family. May he bless all, including their families who are serving in the United States military today. May God bless our country's leaders who make decisions affecting our nation's security. May God bless the USA. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Every time these programs come out, I have the opportunity to, to speak at these. I always make sure that I am not saying something significant this next man because he is the man with the golden voice uh, he, he puts I, I really shouldn't be hosting this he should be the one doing it but I'd like to um, bring up here the man with the golden voice Mr. Ed Lane Vice Commander American Legion Post number 361 good morning we call your 
attention to this small dinner table. It occupies a place of dignity and honor. Today, with the wind blowing, it is already set for one, symbolizing the fact that members of our armed forces are missing from our ranks. They're referred to as POWs and MIAs, but we call them comrades. They're unable to be with their families and loved ones today, so we join together to pay our humble tribute to them and to bear witness to their continued absence. This table is small, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against his or her suppressors. The tablecloth is white, symbolic of the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms. The single red rose and the United States flag represents the blood they may have shed in sacrifice to ensure the freedom of our beloved United States of America. The rose also represents the families of our missing comrades who keep the faith while awaiting their return. The black and white POWMIA flag. It flies at the American Legion, BFW, and DAV post, and public buildings throughout the country. This flag also flies right here at the Ennis Veterans Memorial. This flag is a powerful reminder that as of last Friday, 72,337 Americans are still unaccounted for from World War II. 7,544 from the Korean War. 1,584 from the Vietnam War. 126 from the Cold War. And six from the Gulf Wars and other conflicts. In total, 81,597 Americans are still unaccounted for. 81,597 Americans. It is in their honor. This table is set for one with acknowledgement of its true meaning. The yellow ribbon on the vase represents the yellow ribbons worn on lapel and displayed by thousands who demand with unyielding determination a proper accounting of our missing comrades. A slice of lemon on the plate represents their bitter fate. The salt sprinkled on the plate represents the countless fallen tears of families as they wait. The glass is inverted for they cannot toast with us today. The chair, the chair is empty, but they are not here. The candle is reminiscent of the light of hope that lives and burns in our hearts to illuminate their way home, away from their captors, to the open arms of a grateful nation. The Bible, represents our trust and faith in the commander of us all and the strength of this country that was formed as one nation under God. Let us pray that all of our comrades will soon be back within our ranks. Let us remember and never, never forget their sacrifices. May God forever watch over them and protect them and their families. The Department of Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency, known as DPAA, with the aid of forensic science, DNA technology, and robotic drones, and with the cooperation of hundreds of countries around the world, where Americans have fought and died, continued to locate and identify our missing comrades. Last year, the remains of 180 
of our comrades were identified. And so far this year, 65. Now you might look at the number that's been identified compared with the number that's still missing and conclude that we're wasting our time or it doesn't matter. But ask the family members of those comrades that are still missing. Ask them. You'll get a resounding yes, it matters. And we will not stop. We will not relent until all of our comrades, to the fullest extent possible, have been accounted for. Thank you. Mr. Lane, can I invite you back up to the podium for just a moment? We have a, a short thing that Mr. Larry Fincher would like to do for you. service to this POWMIA table in the past services that we've done here. It has been doing it for us for quite a while and you can see his dedication, his humbleness, and yet his sense of pride in what he's doing and his commitment to what he's doing. So we would like to present Ed with a plaque it's from the American Legion Post 361 and the American Legion Riders Chapter 361. Hereby recognize Master Sergeant Edward Lane, USA Retired, for his devotion to the cause of never forgetting our nation's prisoners of war and those missing in action. The continued efforts of Master Sergeant Lane to bring to the forefront those missing comrades exhibit the highest calling of selfless considerations, dedication, and devotion. Master Sergeant Lane continues to demonstrate extraordinary leadership best described by Douglas MacArthur as having the confidence to stand alone the courage to make tough decisions and the compassion to listen to the needs of others Master Sergeant Lane is a true leader and it is with heartfelt gratitude that he is hereby recognized for his work Thank you Thank you very much Thank you, Mr. Lane. We're going to take a moment to remember those who have passed this year with our remembrance ceremony. Uh, we will be joined up at the podium by Roger P., American Legion Commander, Dane Williams of the Marine Corps League, and members of the VFW Post.
lost members this year. I know the number was fairly low. Uh, the BFW post lost Richard Stewart and Buddy Irwin. Heaven's door has opened up. Jesus has reached down and said, Come on home, hero, to Marine Jimmy Bacchus. Come on home, hero, Jerry Hill. Come on home, hero, Royce Gothard. Rest in peace, brother. I'll see you sooner than later. Take a moment to introduce today's keynote speaker. Sergeant Major Chorus J. Sworn was born in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He attended Florida Memorial College from 1966 to 1969. He was then drafted into the United States Army on March 19, 1969. His military education includes Ranger School, Infantry, Armor, NCO Leadership Development, and U.S. Army Sergeant Major School. Sergeant Major Sworn's previous assignments include Vietnam, Fort Riley, Kansas, Fort Benning, Georgia, Germany, Fort Bliss, Texas, Fort Hood, Texas, Fort Stewart, Georgia, Fort Drum, New York, Fort Lewis, Washington. His awards and decorations include Bronze Star, Legion of Merit, Purple Heart, Meritorious Service Medal, Fifth Award, Army Commendation Medal, Sixth Award, Army Achievement Medal, National Defense Medal, Second Award, Vietnam Service Medal, Southwest Asia Service Medal with four bronze service stars, service in Somalia, humanitarian service medal, non-commissioned officers professional development ribbon, overseas service ribbon, Republic of Vietnam campaign medal, Kuwait Liberation Medal, expert marksman badge rifle, combat infantry badge, ranger tab, parachutist badge. Sergeant Major Sworn is married to the former Joyce Rosier, of Pompano Beach, Florida. They have one daughter, Tunisia. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Swarm. Good morning. Oh man, that makes me feel all, all that reading. But I am old. I'd like to say something before I begin to speak. Remembrance is the highest form of honor. And we're here today to honor Memorial Day. Remembrance is the highest form of honor. Good morning, fellow servicemen and families. I'm retired Sergeant Major Sward. Good attention. In about two months, I went from PLC 
to ask the sergeant. So that means I had my own trike, what's called trike command. I was my own trike command. But well, one morning, an engineer soldier, that bed body was left on the bulldog overnight. It resulted from a firefight in the mountains. General Burke personally threw his helicopter out here and he said, I want that body. I want that body. He called up a tank platoon to help retrieve the body, but the tanks were not, was unable to go up the mountain terrain. So the scouts was called. And we were able to retrieve the body and get it to a hospital for transportation. But the general kept saying, we leave no soldier behind. We leave no soldier behind. We leave no soldier behind. So by me being a little junior NCO, we got back to the platoon area. I asked my platoon sergeant, Sergeant First Class Belcher, why he keeps saying that? Did you go to basic? Yes. Did you have a, a buddy? Yes. What happened if you went somewhere you didn't have a buddy? We was in trouble. Did you go to AIT? Yes. What did they teach you? Leave no one behind. So he said, we leave no one behind. Now the Scott platoon I was in was great. When I say great, we had super NCOs. And I'm going to try to say something about text. But our platoon sergeants and platoon leaders, they set the example. They looked out for our welfare. They ensured that all tasks was understood, supervised, and accomplished. They trained us as a team. They made sound and timely decisions. Instead of us, and instilled into us, always be ready to fight and instill in us that we are brothers for life. I want to say about half a minute by Sergeant First Class Belcher. He's passed on but he was my platoon sergeant. He's the one that looked at me and said, Sworn, you can go somewhere in the military. At that time I thought I couldn't because I was kind of shy. But thanks to First Sergeant uh, Sergeant First Class Belcher, Belcher, I went from two years to 27 years in the military. One thing I'd like to say about Sergeant, uh, Sergeant Major Belcher, he was always safe. In three ways you leave Vietnam, and he would definitely get your attention. You do 365 days, you get injured when you can't come back, and you die. And guess what? It stuck with me. And it did. Stick with me. On May 1970, Mother's Day, I was injured by a landmine. I was wounded. I had wounds and fragments from head to toe. But my brothers helped me. They kept saying, you're going to be all right. You're going to make it. Hang in there. I remember passing out, and I woke up. I was in the 85th Evac Hospital in a place called Quang Tree. From Quang Tree, I went to a USS Sanctuary Navy ship. Thank you, Navy guys. And guess what, guys? That doctor on that ship told me, sworn, I don't know how you made it, but you're still here. I left the, the Navy hospital ship, went to Camp Zummer. My body was so torn up, I was missing part of my mandible. I had fragments all over my body. If, you, if I walk up to you, you can see all fragments of my body. And sometimes my wife still do it. She can count 300 stitch marks on my body. So you can imagine what I look like. But don't feel sorry for me because I got some more stories for you. Okay. From there, I went to Camp Summer, 
Japan, they wide my mouth shut. From Camp Zama, I went to Walter Reed Hospital. Once I arrived at Walter Reed Hospital, June 1st, 1970, I, I was there for a year and a month. Imagine being in one hospital for a year and a month. Oh, what happened to you? I lost part of my mandible. It was fractured, so it was like glass. I had so much fragments in my stomach. But I endured. I watched soldiers come and go. They will say, Swan, why are you still here? I say, guys, I, I can't talk. And I couldn't eat for about, imagine not eating hard food for six months. They will put it in a blender and bring it to me. Everyone knew me. Hey, hey, come Swan, man. He's, he's coming to get his uh, breakfast. It was in a blender. Hey, come Swan, he's coming to get his lunch. It's in a blender. Okay, but the good part of being in Walter Reed Hospital, on Thanksgiving Day, 1970, I had a chance to put my uniform on and go to the White House. And I didn't want to go because back in those days, I'm going to tell you the truth, I like cutting my hair. I wasn't, in, I wasn't wearing an army uniform, so I kind of had a kind of afro. So they cut my hair, put me in a uniform, and said, you're going to the White House. I said, oh, man. Hey, can you go to the White House? So I went to the White House, put me in a wheelchair. So they gave us a tour. I mean, we went around the whole way. And someone said, who oh, is Sergeant Sworn? I said, here I am. He said, come go with me. I said, where are we going? He said, we going up. We going up. We're going to sit next to the president. I started laughing. I said, me, not me. Guess what? They wheeled me around to the table. I still didn't pay attention to the table. And I looked to my right, and I looked. President of the United States of America. Guess what? I used to like to run my mouth. I shut up until he got there. He spoke to me. But the idea was, guess what? He knew everything about me. He knew that I played football in high school. He knew that I went to college. He knew everything about me. But guess what? I cherished that time at the White House. They want to talk about Nixon now, but in my eyes, always will be a great president, even though he had to, had to leave. On July 1st, the doctors recommended that I was fit to return to duty. However, my ETS had passed. My last time in the military had passed. So I was able to recommend that I should proceed for separation. And I did separate from that. I was glad to get out, guys. I'll tell you the truth. I was glad to get out of the hospital for a year, not counting the hospital ship, not counting Camp Zummer. When I returned home, I can remember being met with awkward stares, silence, as if I was the enemy. Imagine you returning home and your family and your friends look at you and they'll say, what's wrong with him? Or what's wrong with you? You're not the same. We're not the same. I won't be the same. Me and my father got into a, a pushing contest. And I know when I pushed my father, it was all over for me. So I said, hey, I got to do something. And I thought about my friends in Vietnam. I said, you know what? I want to go back and serve with my comrades and my friends. But before I go on, I would like to say something about Tex. Larry, if you don't know him, he is a super guy. He don't, I like it, but Larry to me is a super guy. In Vietnam, he was gung-ho. Believe me, when I say he was gung-ho, he was right on my train. What you doing on my train? I'm, I'm the maintenance guy. But eventually, he turned into a scout. On July 6, 2003, our scout platoon had a Vietnam meeting called Remembers. We all talked about what happened to us when we first got at home. I told you my story. This is Larry Finch's story verbatim. When we came home, Everyone expected us to be the same, but we weren't the same of us because the experience we had, nobody
guys could understand what we saw and what we felt. And that is so true. You cannot explain to someone what happened to you in Vietnam. A lot of them would not believe it at all. I was in Somalia. A lot of people don't believe what happened in Somalia was for real. So I re-enlisted in the Army. I didn't take three. I didn't take four. I took six because I knew I was looking for a bond. A, a bond that was more than significant than a brother. It's called a veteran bond. A bond that tells the world that those who fought for it, life have a favor, but never favor would never be understood. A bond that says you ain't heavy. A bond that we will always be remembered. A bond that transgender, gender, race, color, and nationalities. A bond that allows us to cry together, fight together, and defend each other, honored forever, if that's what it takes. We had a bond you never live until you almost die. A bond that says you will never die alone. A bond that will forever say, I'm here for you. I'm going to end up my speech by saying, we have kids. We have in-laws. We have childhood friends. But there's a bond, but there's nothing, I mean nothing, a bond create in the military. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant Major Swarm. We'll now take a few moments to honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Drum cadence will be performed by Randall Price. The laying of the wreath by Marine Corps League Color Guard. Following the laying of the wreath, the Marine Corps League Ellis County Detachment Number 1452 Honor Guard will conduct a gun salute. Lane Grayson, Commissioner for Ellis County Precinct 2, will perform taps, followed by a special performance of Amazing Grace, performed by bagpiper Don Shannon.
covers, let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the freedoms that you've given us in this country, the principles that have that were given to us in your holy book, your guidance that we use to build this country. While many have strayed from the path you would have us take, we continue to look to you for guidance, protection, and love. In the book of Ecclesiastes, you tell us there's a time and a season for everything. And in verse 8 of that book, chapter 3, you say a time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Father, we've come today to remember those that had to give that time, their lives, that price that they paid for. But we also remember the time that our families, who were able to come back from those wars, from those conflicts, from that time away, they came back and they were able to share. They were able to instill into the children, to those growing up, the prices that have been paid. Their memories continue on. We ask that we continue to have that strength through these dark times, that we have the strength from you in order to be able to continue to tell those that war is not the answer, that we want to live in peace, but we know that when the time comes, you'll be with us to be able to bring that to them. We thank you for today, for the guest speaker, for all the hands that went into putting this memorial service into being so that we could remember those that have passed on and those that we have lost, but they are not forgotten. As Sergeant Major Warren was sworn was saying, he's not heavy, he's my brother. I ask that this brotherhood continues today, continues as we move on through today as remembrance, also that at three o'clock when we remember even more. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. On behalf of the Ennis Veterans Memorial Committee, we want to say thank you for your attendance today. Before you leave, we encourage you to hug a neck, shake a hand, and enjoy Ennis Veterans Memorial Park. If you haven't yet, there's still time uh, to get a raffle ticket for the He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother mini statue, or the very same larger-than-life statue on display here at Ennis Veterans Memorial.